That would help. Yeah, it would totally help if I unmuted my microphone. This is what happens when I live stream during my lunch break and I have yet to eat lunch. You, you make silly mistakes like that because you're hungry. Your stomach's growling. So should be a slight delay as far as the audio catching up for you guys. But I think we should be good now. Sound. Yeah, there we go. All right. So you guys can hear me. So, yes, like I was saying that you couldn't hear me, Arcade One Up, you know, CES, they're doing their yearly thing. Last year I was there, would have been here this year, obviously pandemic in the world, you know, threw a wrench in that plan. But they've put all their new cabinets on their website, so we get a little better looks at everything. Some of these are a surprise, some of these are not a surprise, you know, some of these things they flat out said that they were going to release, but this is the first time we actually get to see these beautiful new cabinets. So... Let's go and start right out of the beginning with this X-Men four-player arcade cabinet. We got Joe, Jockey, Joe Booze, Stephen Massey, Jim Met Collectibles, all sorts. Yeah, I definitely should have had a Snickers. I think uh, I wanted to hang out with you guys, but, you know, I guess uh, lunch is going to have to wait for another day as far as actual eating food. But we got a four-player version of the arcade X-Men beat-em-up game. Me, personally, I had my fingers crossed and I was really wishing for some of uh, seen six player cabinet because that was just one of those great things growing up that we saw that six player arcade one up cat or not arcade one up the arcade ugh, six player arcade cabinet that was you know kind of rare back in the day i would have loved to see this in a six player form factor obviously arcade one up would have to completely redesign and change their aesthetics to accompany that so i understand business sense why you don't do that why you just stick with the four player but it looks fantastic, in my opinion. It looks uh, like that iconic X-Men arcade. Uh, Jim Mint says, yeah, I thought they were going to go six-player as well. Yeah, they would have definitely had to give us like a, a wider screen, uh, widen that body out, and you know, just make all, all sorts of new panels that they don't currently make. So um, from a manufacturing standpoint, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them to just have a one-off SKU that has all these different new, unique um panels and things like that if they're not going to be able to reuse those later down the line um but one interesting thing to note is the game lineup so we get the x-men you know beat them up we got the captain america and the avengers beat them up but we also have a different game on here it is a, a fighting game it is the avengers and galactic storm so this is a, a fighting game that was actually made by data east and why that is significant is we have you know uh, the X-Men game that was famously a Konami game. The Captain America and the Avengers game was also Data East. So we've essentially got a Konami slash Disney slash Marvel slash whatever licensing house you want to, you know, loop that X-Men beat them up into mixed in with Data East. So this is, you know, a new, new occurrence, so to speak. This is really the first time we see them um, blending licensors or licensees together, at least from a, a, a top-down view. It, as far as I know, I mean, this thing could be legal mumbo jumbo going in the background where these are all technically still under the same umbrella of that Marvel Disney. And it doesn't matter data East or Konami who made it anymore, but that's, that's neat to see. We got that coin door on the front. Um, I assume this is going to be the faux sticker coin door that we already saw in the legacy collection cabinets, four player cabinets, almost Never have four players at once anyway. Six is even less likely to actually happen. So Stephen Massey was also expecting a Simpsons cabinet maybe later in the year. Yeah, keep in mind, we also have E3, whether it be digital or a physical E3 this year. So um, they always have more announcements later on. They typically do the their winter announcement and their summer announcements. So don't get depressed if you didn't see your cabinet revealed today. But what do you guys think about this X-Men cabinet? Like I said, it, it, to me, it, it looks the part. Obviously, we've got additional buttons on that control panel there because, you know, you've got a different game lineup besides that beat em up that needs those additional buttons. So it's, it's a good-looking cabinet to me. Double Dragon would have been cool, too. To Die For Us is not sure about Killer Instinct, probably running SNES on it. Killer Instinct, please have that blaringly loud speaker. That's one thing it was always known for is you could hear, you know, that combo breaker screaming across the arcade. So I would fully expect this cabinet to be $4.99. Uh, that's, you know, on par with all the other four-player cabinets we've really seen that come with the 
riser and light up marquee and things like that. So I do like the, the, the faux sticker coin door, obviously, you know, a real plastic or metal coin door would be better, but you know, then you raise your, your costs and things like that. But as opposed to them getting away from that, just putting the game lineups on that kick panel, I much prefer looking at a, a coin door, even if it is a sticker. So I'm, I'm glad they're doing that. All right, let's move on down the line. We've got the Dragon's Lair cabinet. This is something that, again, they said they were going to do. Um, they said, you know, in a kind of tongue-in-cheek way, it was already always part of their roadmap, but they said, hey, if you get, you know, 2,000 signatures on a thing, you know, uh, we'll make Dragon's Lair. Well, that happened in like 24 hours. I put out a video, and a lot of people promoted the fact that, hey, community, let's get together and make, you know, Dragon's Lair happen. So it's exactly as I dreamed and hoped it would be. You know, it's got that iconic Dragon's Lair cabinet shape. It's got the, the trilogy lineup, so to speak. So you get Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair 2, and Space Ace. So those great combination of games. It, you know, looks like it has that secondary scoreboard, which is great. The dual speakers split. So you have that secondary scoreboard in between, you know, the not flat marquee where it's actually jagged out and sticking out and everything. You know, I'm I'm excited for that stuff. Uh, it's little details like that that really get me. I love seeing Arcade 1-Up kind of like pushing the envelope and like getting away from that just shark fin cabinet style that the, everything has been kind of cookie cutter molded into. So I like them uh, and I want to continue to see them do more of these dedicated cabinet shapes and designs and things like that. Hezekiah George, I Arcade does Double Dragon, Paul Estep. What games are on the X-Men cabinet? So the X-Men cabinet was the X-Men beat em up it had the Captain America and the Avengers, and then the Avengers Galactic. Uh, I've already forgotten the title. It's it's a beat 'em up from Data East. I think it came out in '95. It was, if I'm being honest, it's not the best game. It's not my favorite game by any means, but it's a good inclusion. And it makes sense on that cabinet. So, one thing to note on this Dragon's Lair cabinet is we'll really have to make sure that joystick is like precise and like dialed in because. With time, quick time release events and things like that, you want that thing to be top notch as far as responsiveness. You don't want any kind of wiggle or nonsense going on when you're trying to play Dragon's Lair because the game's already hard enough. It's it's crazy difficult. Dylan J says they did a really good job with the cabinet shape. Stephen Massey, nice that they have two artwork versions of this cab. Solid Snake says time to sell my Gen One. So let's see if there's any fine details that we missed here specifications yeah just dragon's layer one two and space ace and it'd also be interesting to find out what kind of is uh, powering this because there's a bajillion different versions of dragon's layer out there there's some that use daphne emu emulation which is good but it's not 100 percent perfect there's some that use you know the dvd version there's a million different crop and chop high def low res. I mean, so it'll be curious to see what the end result of Dragon's Lair we get is like what, what version it is, what it looks like, what it's running on. Um, cause essentially they could basically throw a DVD player in there for cheap and have you running Dragon's Lair off a of DVD collection. Um, I don't know if they'll do that. We'll see, but I'm, I'm personally excited that like, I don't need this cabinet at all. I've already got the new wave toys one, but for whatever reason, I've always been obsessed with Dragon's Lair. So I will be picking this up and somehow figuring out a way to put it in my house. Um, I'm completely out of room, 100% honest. I, I got Big Buck Hunter World today. It just showed up this afternoon. And here's the Space Ace Arcade version. So you got your different art styles. So if you're not a Dragon's Lair fan, you can get the Space Ace version. Same game lineup and everything, but you're getting, you know, just different graphic package, which is good. It's a nice option. So, uh, I would fully expect this to kind of be a retailer thing like we've already seen previously in 2020 where some retailers have this art package. Arcade 1UP has their own art, art package. And, you know, we'll see a lot of that moving forward because if you're a retailer, you don't want to be selling the exact same thing as everybody else because then you don't have any way to, like, draw people in and get, get them to buy that same product other than, you know, undercutting your cost. And then at that point you're losing all your profit margin, things like that. So I a hundred percent understand why retailers want their own unique SKUs and setups like different art packages or light up led buttons and things like that. So it's good to see this and I'm excited to finally, you know, finally see this happening. Cause I was worried that dragon's Lair was going to be 
kicked way far down the roadmap, so to speak, um, just because they had mentioned something about tying it in with a Netflix special, which is still far, far away. And then, of course, we got the Killer Instinct arcade cabinet. This is probably one of the most requested games um, ever since Arcade 1 came out. There was like, hey, can you make Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct? Those two were always like up there with the NBA jams and the blitzes. But as far as fighting games, it was always, are you guys going to release Mortal Kombat? Are you guys going to release Killer Instinct? And then, by God, here it is. Killer Instinct 1 and 2 and Battletoads. And if you read down here, there's also, yes, the arcade version of Battletoads, thank God. There's also Battletoads slash Double Dragon as a bonus game. So it's not shown on the picture here. Um, but so four games. So three listed on the kick plate, but you're getting four games. And here's the best part. It, uh, it has the live Wi-Fi feature. So you'll be able to play these games over Wi-Fi against people, which is fantastic. Um, super excited about that. So if you're a competitive fighting game fan... You want to play some Killer Instinct, the classic versions? Heck yeah, you get to do it live, which I'm just assuming. But I'm going to assume Code Mystics probably did this um, as far as the emulation. They've been the Arcade 1-Up's go-to house for emulation and things like that. As far as if you really want it done and done right, you go to Code Mystics to help you out. That's who's done their NBA Jam online. That's who did you know their new Marvel fighting cabinets. That's who did the Star Wars cabinet. So I fully expect this to probably be another Code Mystics joint effort. Again, just given their track history of what they've done and what they've partnered together with Arcade 1UP in the past. So very excited for this. Travis MCP, bro, we playing versus Doug? I will tell you all straight up, I am trash at Killer Instinct. I've always been a Street Fighter player more than anything and Mortal Kombat. Uh, I was super late to the game on Killer Instinct. I played the newer version on Xbox a lot, but as far as the old traditional arcade versions, um, you will all beat the bejesus out of me. Battletoads, that's a different story. I've made my own Battletoads cabinet, and I will beat the bejesus out of any swine or robots out there in space trying to come at me with my, my Battletoads action. But this Killer Instinct, guys, I don't know about you, but to me, they nailed it. Again, we're getting that you know, change of the cabinet shape. It's it's close to that midway design. Obviously, it's not going to be 100% accurate because, you know, you got to make some, take some liberties with it because, you know, it's got to fit that arcade one-up form factor. But you got that rare logo on the kick plate. Um, obviously, the design is not final as per this text down here. So things could change. Uh, but for the most part, I like what they've done right here. Buttons, joysticks, I, you know, Good color combination, everything. Killer Instinct. Wouldn't be surprised if you see some people out there with a different version of this retailer specific where this Killer Instinct panel lights up, you know, stuff like we saw with the arcade one up Miss Pac Man where there was like five different versions retailer. Again, I fully expect this to happen for all almost all of these cabinets. So don't get shocked. Um, you just kind of have to play it, play it by ear and play the waiting game if you want to pick the particular version you, you, you know, that suits your fancy, so to speak. Jim Mick Collectibles says, need to spruce up that riser. I, you know, my, my knee jerk reaction was yes. But then I was like, you know, it's, it's a very black cabinet as is. Um, what do you guys think? Would you want graphics like killer instinct graphics wrapped around this? Or do you think that like just tracks from it? Because to me, it looks pretty sleek where it all kind of blends in and it's all one, you know, solid, cohesive black cabinet, but we'll see. back up and then we go into the legacy edition cabinets so we got the atari legacy edition arcade cabinet with that tempest shape and form factor going down the game list real quick so what games does this dozen classic atari titles so you got asteroid centipede major havoc missile command aka -ar, crystal castles tempest millipede gravitar liberator asteroids deluxe and space duel all included so you got a 12 in one and we can play this sizzle reel here real quick my dad will have audio which is good because i don't want to get nicked for anything while i'm trying to showcase this product but you get the spinner, you get the trackball, you get the black buttons. It's a 
good looking cabinet. I mean, I don't need this at all, but man, it's sexy. Something about these just old, you know, old cabinet shapes. That was the great thing about the arcades is, you know, everything was unique and individual. You got to see, you know, companies showcase their, you know, individuality, so to speak, by having these things uniquely identified. Let's get some closer looks at it. Light up marquee, of course. Again, we get this front kick plate. It's a sticker, uh, so it's not a functional kick plate. Travis MCP says, hopefully the spinner is good this time. Yeah, I know that they definitely, um, they struggle with that first release on their old school spinner. They did come back out with a second, you know, new and improved one. And from all parties I heard, that second version spinner was much more, you know, improved. So I would expect these to be the upgraded components. There's no sense in, you know, reissuing a product with, you know, a new cabinet shape and all these you know, nice new bells and whistles if you were still going to go back and throw the old crappy components in there. So I have zero expectations that this would have um, crappy spinner or trackball, at least generation one's trackball and spinner. QA Ninja says, I'm going to need a bigger man cave. <laughs> Shannon Tootin, I love the look of the Tempest cab. Wish I could pre-order it. Yeah, that's one thing. I'm sure pre-orders will pop up very soon for some of these. Uh, I would expect April, March, April, you know, that springtime release schedule that they always kind of stick to. And just fair warning, as always, I've said this a million times, but people always forget it. If you want to pre-order a cabinet, that's fine. But keep in mind, pre-ordering does not mean you're going to be the first person on the block to get that machine. Literally 99% of the time, the person that pre-orders it, you can actually go into like a Walmart or a Best Buy and you'll end up being able to find these cabinets in store before your pre-order ever gets shipped and delivered to you. So just keep that in mind. That's, you know, my public service announcement for everybody out there thinking about pre-ordering machines. If you want to be the first person to have it, you need, you need to realize that chances are you'll find it in store. One thing I do wish we had was volcano buttons here. So we got the player one, the player two, there's just these, and again, these are renders. These could change. So this is my constructive criticism to arcade one up. Um, everything so far looks home run on this 12 and one Tempest cabinet, but I would love to see some volcano buttons right here. That would just be the icing on the cake. And I think most of you guys could probably agree 17 inch monitor in here. Not a, not a giant, you know, upgrade or anything like that. Light up marquee, you know, graphic riser. So we're, we're getting some nice bells and whistles to top it off. And again, this is obviously a digital render, hence why this trackball looks completely flat. But again, I'd love to see some volcano buttons right here. Arcade One Up says, we are working on fixing the pre-order system. We want early adopters to get the cabs first. Well, hey, there you go, straight from them. So that is awesome. Uh, <laughs> me personally, I, that excites me to no end because I pre-order things and I'm just because I'm the guy that I don't need to be the first person on the block to have it. But that is a nice, you know, a nice thing to look forward to if, hey, if you're an early adopter, then you don't have to worry about potentially in the future people showing up three weeks before you walking into a Walmart in Pittsburgh, randomly getting something that you've had on pre-order for six months. So I get that frustration. But man, again, I just one more time, I got to say, we're talking about inanimate objects, but man, this is a sexy cabinet. Make sure I didn't miss any key details here. So yeah, 17 inch screen, just like I suspected. Light up marquee, printed coin door, 80 pounds. So everything, everything else is on par with the previous arcade one-up releases. We'll go back and we'll move on to the Pac-Man. So this is the Legacy Edition Arcade Pac-Man. So we got the change in the cabinet shape. So if you're looking at this going, oh, they've already released a Pac-Man. Yes, they released several versions of Pac-Man, but this one, similar to the 40th anniversary, has much more of that classic Pac-Man silhouette. We're going to have more games this time. We got Pac-Man, we got Galaga, Galaxian, Pac-Land, Pac-Man, of course, Super Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Pac-and-Pal, Pac-Mania, Mappy, Dig Dug, and Rompers. So that's a new new inclusion and i know somebody out there is going to be like why don't they put miss pac-man on this machine well because you can you know miss pac-man and pac-man let me just put it this way they're going through some stuff they got to work out some personal issues you know it is what it is 
Travis MCP says, I legit may review the Killer Instinct on my channel. Haven't done that in a long time. That's how hyped this makes me. I would love to see that, Travis. Please, please do that because I know you're, you've been one of those people that have definitely been jonesing for some Killer Instinct since day one. We've got the control panel layout here for the new Pac-Man Legacy Edition, which I really love the concept of the whole Legacy Edition where you're getting like more games, you're getting that, you know, redesigned cabinet shape. I know a lot of people are out there like, oh, no more Pac-Man. Again, my my two cents, and for whatever it's worth, constructive criticism, take it or leave it. Oh, wait, Arcade 1-Up says, we still have a few more big announcements later this year with a few more titles. So that's that's awesome. That's what we expected. You know, we'll have uh, the summer announcements, and they've also been pretty good about, you know, trickling some out in between uh, the summer and winter announcements too. So keep that in mind. It's not like we're going to have to wait completely for six months. But anyways, like I was saying, my constructive criticism. So the the riser here. So we got the classic, um, you know, maze pattern going around this. What I would prefer, and again, this is my two cents, and you guys can chime in. Let me know what your thoughts. What I would prefer on this riser is it to be all yellow and have you know the this kind of image right here, the side panel image of the classic Pac-Man arcade? I would like to see that on the front of the kick plate. So all yellow and then this image right here down on the kick plate. What do you guys think? You think stick with a maze design or would you prefer something you know all yellow so it looks more like a uniform one one piece design? HG says, Killer Instinct was one of my most wanted. Mad River Reefs, Stephen Massey, 90s, early 2000s. We had 32-inch screens in our Mortal Kombat cabs, Tekken cabs, Street Fighter cabs, etc. Nightwalker says, it's cool. Frank Gallagher says, what they really need to release is House of the Dead 2 cabinet. I got to believe that is 100% on their roadmap and, you know, well within what's going to happen. Like I said, I'm excited to open up this big buck hunter because this is their first experience with light gun games. And from all people I've heard, you know, they say so far so good. So it looks like, see, what's the price on this? Don't know as of yet. It's not listed on here. Um, I would expect three ninety nine, four ninety nine, 99, so somewhere around that price point. If, if I'm being honest, probably closer to four ninety nine since it is 12 games it has the light up marquee has the riser and things like that. Head back to work. All right. Peace out, Arcade One Up. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for, you know, giving us our childhoods in these arcades. So good luck for the rest of your day and your week, guys. All yellow seems to be uh, the the vote coming through so far. So all yellow, all the way, including the riser, all black with yellow Pac-Man artwork. Yep. Actually think the yellow might be too much yellow. So again, uh, that's one thing. Like I know this is going to be a hit or miss thing. Let me watch their scissor reel real quick so we can get a closer look at this. I mean, might as well, right? They, they put all the hard work into these these sizzle reel videos. We might as well check them out. They need a UV arcade type riser. Now that would be sweet. Now one thing I've added to a lot of my risers personally is I've got UV pinstripe tape and I put it around a lot of my cabinets and my risers. And then I've got a black light in my little arcade one up room which is, you know, nice. It's not so much, so it's not like, you know, oh my God, I turn on the black lights and everything is just glowing to no end. Um, it's, you know, just little accent pieces, so to speak. But I do like that idea, Wolfie. All right. And moving on. So this one, I, this one really excites me. So this is the Capcom Legacy Edition arcade cabinet with the classic Street Fighter II World Warrior designs and everything. I love this. Um, if, if you don't already know and you can't see in the background there, let me obviously back out for a little bit for you. So this, this is my pride and joy. This is my you know legit old school Street Fighter II original cabinet. I've since changed some things on it and upgraded it or whatever. But for all intents and purposes, this was my childhood dream cabinet. I literally drove to Ferguson, Missouri in the middle of some riots, for a lack of a better term, because they 100% were riots, because there was, uh, I'm not even going to talk about the riots. Anyways, yeah, I, I rented a truck, drove to a shady place and bought this, and you know, I had to put money into it, and it's, it's an encumbering investment to have a full-size arcade cabinet, but this was always my childhood dream was to have this arcade cabinet. So now 
that I see them releasing this amazing, you know, Capcom Legacy Edition arcade cabinet. I, this, is, this is what I wish existed years ago when I made that, you know, purchase. Obviously, you can't really compare apples to oranges type of thing when it compares to a full-size arcade cabinet and all the bells and whistles versus an arcade one-up cabinet. However, if the arcade one-up cabinet that I'm looking at right now on the screen, this Capcom Legacy Edition arcade cabinet existed back then, I could have saved myself so much money, headaches, and trouble, as well as space, because this thing is, you know, the size of a freaking refrigerator in my room. It weighs several hundred pounds. Took me and two other buddies, like, a hell of a time to get it upstairs in this room here. Um, I, I would have much, I would have been so much better off to have something like this, and even even if the controls suck and all this, like that, that can be changed for pennies on the dollar compared to what I've put and sunk into my arcade one-up cabinet there. So JLS80 says, so this is basically the co cocktail cabinet game lineup. And yes, you are correct. I have the Street Fighter um, cocktail cabinet because again, I was, I'm a Street Fighter nerd. Uh, I love that cocktail cabinet lineup, 12 in one games. Um, so I bought that. So this is the exact same cocktail cabinet lineup. Obviously, it's not going to have things like spinning the game around for cocktail mode or things like that. But it is a fantastic game lineup. So if you're not familiar with the games, we got Street Fighter 2 World Warriors, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, Street Fighter, the original one, Darkstalkers, Commando, Final Fight, Ghost and Goblins, Strider, 1944. And we got Championship Edition Street Fighter 2, New Challengers. And then we've got Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So lots of Street Fighter 2. So you've really got to be a fan of Street Fighter 2. However, things like Darkstalkers, which is a fantastic freaking game. Commando is a fun game. Ghost and Goblins, which is a fun game for about five minutes until you realize it's impossible to beat. Um, I still enjoy it. Strider and then 1944 Loop Master. So again, this is like the Final Fight cabinet, all the Street Fighter 2 games, and then like, you know, this amazing original Street Fighter 2 aesthetic. One thing I don't like, and this is something I'm hoping they change. Again, these are like, you know, mock-ups. Is this section right here. So this is the original Street Fighter 2 exact same layout lineup and graphic of their original arcade one-up lineup. That is n this control panel overlay graphic right here. That is not what you would see on the full-size version of it. What you would see on the full-size version of it is essentially akin to what is on the front of the riser right here. So what I would like them to do, now obviously I understand why they maybe don't wanna have the Street Fighter verbiage on there because on the full-size machine, it rolls over to the underside of the control panel. But what I would like them to do is use something like on the side, this graphic right here, put this graphic on top of that control panel instead of this cement, thing that we've already seen before that is technically not accurate. I don't want to be that guy that's like, eh, it's not arcade accurate, but I feel like that's literally low hanging fruit that you could put that, this graphic right here on that control panel. What do you guys think? So Carlos, Igui, this is not live, at least not according to the website. So you look at the specifications, has the game lineup. There is no mention of this being a live online connected cabinet whatsoever, um, which doesn't shock me because again, this is for all intents and purposes, the exact same game lineup as that 12 in one cocktail cabinet that we've already got. So I would fully expect it to be the exact same PCB. I do wish it was live and online and connected and everything. That would be amazing. But as it appears right now in this day, Day in January, right now, it does not appear to have online connections whatsoever. Again, these are supposedly coming out later around springtime, so something could change between now and then. But as of right now, it does not appear that this has any line. No lives, no buys, says Jason. It looks taller. I don't expect it to be taller. I, would, I think it's probably the exact same as all the other ones. It just looks it because it's a different cabinet shape that we're not used to. So it's not rounded here. It's not rounded off here. So if it is taller, maybe by an inch, and it's maybe this top top end right up here. Chris Davis says, nice Capcom logo placement at the Rise incident. It looks taller. Darn. Most do. Do they have online? Is there any reason the marquee... Whoop, sorry, the chat's going way too fast. Is there any reason the marquee being so far back into the cabinet? Uh, so my guess is, again, this is just a digital render, what the actual product looks like that may be sticking out a little more, 
But logistically speaking, if this is what it ends up being and there's like that much space, you know, the front panels and the fins and everything like that, I would say it's just because they don't have that underneath panel that holds the speaker that is long enough yet. They would have to create a new panel just to make it stick out a little more to where it attaches to the light up marquee, which is not something they've done before. Not something they can't do, but it's just not something they've done before. Again, that goes back to that whole creating a brand new skew slash manufactured item for a one-time use. Booster G, X-Men will definitely be my arcade one-up cabinet. Cannot wait. I hope it comes with that 7-Eleven smell, says JLS80. <laughs> X-Men will be the first beat-em-up online. And that will be a perfect beat-em-up online, in my opinion. Go ahead and watch their scissor reel. Of the Legacy Edition. Again, it's a beauty. There's a reason this was my dream cabinet growing up. Like, this is the most 90s arcade cabinet. Again, I just really wish they changed that control panel overlay graphic. Custom riser. Looks great. I mean, it, it almost, those, those graphics almost look like they just, you know, they need a, a UV light on them permanently because, like, it's just so 90s. The color scheme and everything, you just shine a black light on that thing and make it pop. So, I like what they're doing with this Legacy Edition. It's a really great concept. Uh, this is like way, way, way. So, I've been talking about Arcade One Up on YouTube for years now, and way, 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 way back in the beginning, there was like some early mock ups of Arcade One Up cabinets going around before the company had ever even sold anything. This is still when they were brand new. They had an early mock-up of their Street Fighter II Championship Edition cabinet, and it had this kind of aesthetic to it. And I I dreamed and wished that it would happen, but again, they changed it over to that Championship Edition. But I love what they're doing. Like I said, Legacy Edition, I, I want to see that keep continuing so we can, like, you know, what do you guys think about Legacy Edition Mortal Kombat with online capabilities and things like that? Like, I know you guys would probably be down for that, right? HG says, I'm concerned online will be dead very soon after release, to be honest. I always have that concern. That concern goes across console gaming, you know, all, all across gaming period, not just arcades and arcade one-up products, whatever. Like, I always worry that same thing, too. I'm still impressed with how many people are still playing NBA Jam online right now. So that gives me hope that a lot of these fighting games um, will still have continued support. Because, again, people have been clamoring for a long time to get some of these online or just get these games released, period, and to have things like Killer Instinct online, I think that's definitely going to have a lot of people coming out of the woodwork um, and supporting these. Controls on Street Fighter 2. Uh, I would expect them to be the same controls, joysticks, and buttons we've seen on the recent releases of the Arcade 1-Up cabinets. So if you hate those, you'll hate these most likely, but that's the thing. Everything can be changed and modded and you know, swapped out if you don't like them. Golden Axe restock, Cyberborg. From what I understand, there will not be any restocks on that. Their last remaining restocks, I believe, just occurred not too long ago. JLS80 says it's an easy fix if it remains ball top. Yeah, that's... Again, these are early mock-up designs. Um, I would be amazed if they sent ball tops out there. But again, that literally screws off, screws on, easy fix. So this one is interesting. This one, definitely I didn't expect to see... Um, so we got the Pong four player pub table. So it's appropriately named Four people standing around, you know, hanging out at the bar. We've got four players. So you got four spinners again, fully expect these to be decent spinners. Not, not that I thought they were ever going to go backwards as far as their progression. I fully expect these to be their new and improved spinners, but we got Pong, Pong doubles, super Pong. Actually, let me go down here and read this because some of those. So yeah, you got Pong, Quadruprong, Pong Doubles, Warlords, which Warlords are, excuse me, Warlords, getting tongue-tied. Warlords is a fan-freaking-tastic game, and it's even more fun when you get more people playing with it. So that, to me, is one of like the, the standouts on this, is the inclusion of Warlords and have it be a four-player cabinet. You got Pong Sports, Circus Atari, Tempest, and Super Breakout specifications so we don't have any dimensions on here uh, obviously we got this like photoshop mock-up guy here standing next to it so waist high so 36 inches is what i'm gonna guess literally just a guess Sh shooting from the hip just given 
given experiences with things, maybe 36 inches is what I would expect this to kind of sit at. And again, that is a complete guess on my part. If I'm off, don't try to kill me. HG, no expected release date for Killer Instinct. So more information will be available on all this. Like I said, this stuff popped up today. Um, the way this has always worked in the past is you get these like early little snippets of information. You get these, you know, the design photos and renders and things like that. And then what has typically happened in the past, we get some more information to fill in the blanks, so to speak, uh, in the coming weeks. And then you'll start seeing retailers pop up for pre-orders um, shortly after that. So your Walmarts, your Best Buys, your Targets, um, the Brick, things like that. You'll start seeing them taking early pre-orders because we've already seen uh, the Brick in Canada taking early pre-orders for some of these legacy edition machines. So again, once these retailers get kind of get more information and get everything, all their ducks in a row from Arcade 1UP and everyone has that decisive time to go ahead and let the cannons fly, so to speak, they will start taking pre-orders. So. I would expect pre-orders in a few weeks, if not days. I mean, who knows? But given given the track record, a few weeks before pre-orders and then, you know, ETA for the stuff to be, you know, that April, maybe even March sometimes. Just really kind of depends on if the world continues to spiral out of control. Mega Zero Forever. Wish there were some space shooter cabs. How much will Killer Instinct be? I would expect four ninety nine. dollars That's just given their pricing strategy in the past. That's how much, you know, things have typically been $4.99, $5.99 tops. That's like the max threshold of what they've released thus far. What do you guys think? This four-player Pong pub table with Tempest and more. Swoon, says Wicket Yubnub. If they brought Truxton to this, I would buy it right away. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet with Capcom SNK 1 and 2. Marvel vs. Capcom is definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of them being able to affordably emulate that um, and put that in a machine to where they can still make the profit margins they want to make. It's, it's not that they don't want to make it. They know everybody wants that cabinet. It'll, it'll get a glorified huge release when it happens. It just, it's a matter of them being able to reproduce and emulate that hardware to the best of their abilities to where we actually like them playing the games and you typically want to do it right. That game, that was, that's another one you would also want to do online. Jason says, I do like the coin door stickers. Good lineup, all in all. <laughs> Kagi Wong says, Pong sucks. Uh, it, obviously, this is not going to be for everybody, but I do like the form factor and the, the idea. They didn't just try to give you a basic arcade cabinet with a Pong paddle on it or something. like This is, this is a, a good design aesthetic for how you want to do it. The fact that it's four players versus two players is even more attractive, in my opinion. Um, so... It'll be interesting to see what this price is out at and if we get more information on it. So hit the refresh button because I notice Arcade One Up has been updating this website ever since we started this. Make sure nothing else popped in here magically. Okay. So do you want to recap or chat anymore or you guys want to cut it loose? As I said, I just wanted to chat, get your guys' opinions. Biggie D says Killer Instinct has a beefed up CPU for sure to run on that game. Absolutely. That is a notorious game to emulate correctly. Um, that's the reason why people that do like Raspberry Pi mods and things like that. They're like, oh my God, you know, I, I you know, I want to play Killer Instinct and it's not working. It's, well, it's because you got to have like a Raspberry Pi 4 and you got to have all your stuff like really, really going strong. Like it's just not going to cut it on most things. Big B says, I'd get dragons. I'd buy this in my bar area. In my place is Aaron Higgins. Big pass of Killer Instinct is the SNES versions, but not sure how Arcade 1UP hardware can handle it. So yeah, I think most people would be disappointed if this was the SNES versions of Killer Instinct. However, I'm just going off the screenshot. Uh, that's not the SNES version. Again, this is just a design render and a mock-up, but that's not SNES Killer Instinct. That is Arcade Killer Instinct. So... I mean, if you're going to make a Killer Instinct cabinet, I don't think you shoot yourself in the foot by releasing only the Super Nintendo versions of it. I think uh, I think you 100% have to release you know, the arcade versions of those games. Otherwise, I think people start coming out with pitchforks and fire and torches. Like, I, I, don't, think, I don't think that works. At least, I don't think the community reacts well to this being Super Nintendo ports, if that's the case. 
what happened to the stand-up outrun? So that's already kind of been shown and announced. We just don't know when the retailers are going to start carrying it. So I, you know, no news on that one as far as I know, but we've already seen it. We know what it looks like. We know they're going to make it. It's just, when is it going to be for sale? That's the, the current unknowns. Chef Dave says, <laughs> imagine Super Nintendo. Frank Gallagher, cool toy. A House of the Dead 1 and 2 cabinet would be amazing. Absolutely, 100%. I agree. Um, I 100% also understand why they did the Big Buck Hunter cabinet because that has like the broadest generic appeal to um, audiences. Obviously, it's harder to go into like a Walmart buyer's meeting and showing them artwork for zombies and gore and blood and things like that and say, yeah, the kids will love this House of the Dead zombie game, which in all honestly, most of them will, but if you're trying to be, you know, PC in today's times, it's a little harder to sell a killer instinct to, uh, to a buyer at a, a major retail outlet than it is, uh, something like big buck hunter. So will we see house of the dead? Absolutely. There's no way, there's no doubt in my mind that'll come. Uh, it just, it'll, it'll be a while. Like I said, I think they'll continue to release some safe choices before we see House of the Dead. So I, I think you'd probably see like Time Crisis before you see House of the Dead. Just my two cents. When will Star Wars Pinball release? So last I heard, early February, late January. That was the last estimated information. And that is, you know, if things don't happen, you know, pandemic supplies get a run again to where the... the you know, the, the ports and the docks and everything are so backed up to where people can't do anything about it. You know, that that's the latest I'd expect is February. February is what I'm guessing. I've, I've had mine on pre-order since day one through GameStop. Haven't got any new notifications about it, but I expect it to show up February. That's, that's what my expectation is. And if it gets moved farther out, so be it, as long as it works. Do I think that the Dragon's Lair scoreboard will work? That's an that's a really good question. And that's another one of those things like I don't if you're gonna do it, do it right type of thing. Like if you're going to make a Dragon's Lair cabinet and you're gonna go through the whole nine yards of giving it the nice design aesthetics, putting the speakers on both sides, you got this, you know, dedicated marquee that's designed differently, you gotta make a working scoreboard. Um obviously that in increases their prices and everything, but I think that is well within the, the capabilities of the engineers and design team of Arcade 1 to have a, a functional LED scoreboard right there. So I 100% expect this to be a functional scoreboard. Uh, that, that's all I got to say. Like, I expect it to be. Like, if it shows up and we find out that it's a sticker, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say, guys, come on, take the time, do it right. We'll pay extra because I know we will. Andrew Zepeda, will we see The Simpsons this year? If we do see The Simpsons, which I 100% expect us to see The Simpsons, I would expect that to be the big E3 summer announcements. Um, uh, one of them anyway. But yeah, I, I have always anticipated and expected a Simpsons release to be announced this summer as opposed to today. I wasn't expecting to see The Simpsons today. I was 100% expecting to see Dragon's Lair, X-Men, and a few others, Killer Instinct, namely but I had no inclination that we would see Simpsons today. I fully have always anticipated that to be the, the E3 type of thing going on. Yeah. Tabular Joker has a good point. So new wave toys, they've got, you know, they're small. I've got it in a different room, but they've got their 12 inch version of dragon's Lair that has HDMI out a fully functional secondary working scoreboard display. Like, they can do it on a tiny, tiny scale. Arcade one up can do it. Like, so I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to say this blunt. Arcade One Up is going to put in a fully functional LED secondary scoreboard. And it's not, I'm, I'm not saying that because I know that. I'm saying, I'm trying to like will that into existence as if there was any conversations being out there internally with Arcade One Up where they were like, should we do a sticker or should we do the scoreboard? I'm telling you, you're doing the scoreboard. I'm, I'm making this happen. I'm sending positive vibes out there into the universe and it will be a LED scoreboard by God. Same thing for Space Ace. Just throwing that out there. Also, we'll have a fully functional working LED scoreboard. Otherwise, people will be people will be upset. I'm just telling you. Judah Buddha says, I would only buy the Dragon's Lair for no more than $500, and that's cutting it. And that's, 
That's what I would honestly expect this to come out like. So the 499, I think, is kind of going to be the new norm for um, all these machines because we're getting a riser, we're getting light up marquees. So I, I expect 499 to kind of be like the standard going going rate for arcade one up products moving forward. Obviously, smaller different peripherals are going to change, but 499 is what I, I'm expecting um, to, to shell out for these these newer machines. Mobile Decay says, you're getting a sticker. Don't jinx, don't jinx me, man. Frank Gallagher, Terminator 2 cabinet. So Terminator 2 cabinet, that one, that one's interesting because it's technically not a light gun cabinet as far as how it works. But if you do a Terminator 2 cabinet, it's a no-brainer to try to pair that with Revolution X. Um, obviously, that's maybe a, a rights headache just because you're dealing with Aerosmith and Aerosmith songs and things like that. But those two games, same form factor, design, aesthetic, um, obviously arcade one of engineers would have to create all sorts of new peripherals, like the little Uzi guns and things like that. But yeah, I got to believe that's on the roadmap too. Uh, certain things just seem like low hanging fruit as far as them to, to come out with, because they've made it very clear that they want to, you know, they want to secure the top 50 best selling arcade games of all time. And a lot of these games that we're asking for and clamoring for 99% of them are in that top 50 list. So, you know, these heavy hitters, I got to believe it's it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when that we will see it. Tony Lacerti, do we know all the cabinets? We know all the cabinets that were announced today. We don't know all of the cabinets that are coming out in 2021 because they'll have later releases and announcements throughout the year. That's what they've always done. They've always traditionally done uh, a set of announcements at CES in January, then they do some in the summertime around E3 and they also sprinkle one or two in between both of those. So that's, that's what we happened. Like, you know, we got our summer announcements this 2020 and then we also found out later about outrun, you know, right before Christmas time. So I expect, you know, sprinkled throughout 2021, we'll have some more new announcements besides today, as well as the E3 announcements. Piper. So do I think we'll see a Tekken cabinet? I think that one's maybe uh, my gut reaction to that is not anytime soon. I think that if that is on the roadmap, it's like way down on the totem pole just because I think things like Marvel versus Capcom two, and obviously the killer instinct that they've made. I think there's a couple of other fighting game franchises that are going to get like redesigns and repacks and refeatures. Mortal Kombat obviously is due for a 30th anniversary pretty soon. It'll no doubt get re-released into a, a pretty looking cabinet that has more bells and whistles and games and things like that. I think you'll see all that stuff happen before you'll see a Tekken cabinet. That's just my two cents. Again, that's just me talking, talking out there. <laughs> a lot of excitement for Dragon's Eye. That's good. Chiller cabinet. I don't think so. Jonathan Fox, I sympathize 100% about the needing a bigger house. 100% <laughs> I do, man, because I am bursting at the seams. I just had a new one show up today. Go back to this. I I forgot that last game, that fighting game. I'd already already forgot the name of it. Where is it? Do, do, do. Oh yeah, the Avengers and Galactic Storm. That's right, Galactic Storm. Like I said, that one, if I remember correctly, came out around '95. It's a fighting game. Wasn't the best as far as critical acclaim or anything like that, but it's a nice inclusion. It makes perfect sense to go in here. I. I'm, I'm staring at this picture and I'm like internally having that monologue with myself because I absolutely do not need another four player cabinet because I have NBA Jam and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and they take up so much real estate in my home. But X-Men was just one of my grails. That six player wide body X-Men cabinet was you know another one of those childhood if I ever won the million dollar prize package type of things that you always tell yourself when you're a kid. The six-player X-Men cabinet was always on my dreams, dream list. Four-player cabinet, I completely understand. And I I just look at this artwork, and I'm such a comic book nerd and as it is. I look at this artwork, and I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I don't need a second bedroom. I don't need a bed in there. I just need more arcades, right? I need, I need this X-Men cabinet more than I need a guest bed. And people come over to my house, they may agree. They say, hey, you know, I was going to sleep on a comfortable bed, but you know what? You got this arcade cabinet in an empty box that it came in. I'll sleep on the empty box and I'll play this X-Men cabinet. And I'll go, see, I'm glad we met, you know, eye to eye and we both had the same thought process. So, so yes, Rex, the coin slot is just a decal. It is not a functional coin slot. It is not made of plastic or metal or anything like that. It's just an aesthetic, aesthetic coin, 
coin door. They've essentially what they've done here is they've redesigned. So they've went away from cabinets have these graphic game listings on the kick panel to now what they're doing is these faux coin doors. They're decals, but I I'm okay with it. And they're putting the game listings on things like the risers or at least some of them anyway. And again, these are early mockups and digital renders. So things, things may change. And Piper says, come on, 2000 stimulus check. Stephen M sucks that they come with risers. Now I had first and second gen arcade one ups and made my own risers that are one inch higher for more comfortable gameplay. I don't want to pay premium for the riser. Yeah, I get that argument. The funny thing about the risers was they, they had a hard time getting retailers to understand and believe that people would want the riser as a whole. Like, um, so originally all the ar original arcade one up releases came separate without a riser. You had to buy the riser you know, individual. And then people were like, Oh my God, I can't find risers. They're all sold out. That's because they were not bundled with the cabinet and everyone had their own idea of how high and how tall these machines should be. So they quickly sold out. Now, um, that's not the case. Everyone for the most part prefers to play their machine on top of a riser. So all these machines are coming with risers built in. So X O N O X says, I hate, they are so freaking much money. Um, yeah, cost is relative, and five hundred dollars is nothing to sneeze at by any means. But it is still pennies on the dollar compared to, like I said, things like my full size art, you know, Street Fighter Two cabinet. I paid well more than five hundred dollars to buy that thing. Obviously, there I see people talk on all the time that yeah, you can buy an arcade cabinet for three hundred dollars on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Some people can, yes, but that is definitely not the norm. Um, you are not able to just randomly in any town in America get on Craigslist and buy the original arcade cabinet of your dreams. That's just not realistic. So for those people, this is the next best option to you for something that looks and plays like the original arcade cabinet. This is this is what your options are. Edwin Hernandez, what's up? Jeff Dave, I like the risers with decals. It's a cool look with different artwork. Piper says, I was fully prepared to buy some arcade one-up cabinets during Black Friday, but didn't see any sales. Yeah, 2020 Black Friday was very uh, underwhelming, and that was for all intents and purposes due to the pandemic, so I completely understand why that happened, but it is what it is. Hey, what's up, Patrick? Thanks for joining, man. Patrick was up late last night talking about the legacy cabinets. So definitely check out his video on that. Um, or at least I say late last night, he lives in that crazy Arizona time zone where time zones don't exist. So it was like midnight for me. It may have been just like nine, nine in the afternoon for him. I forget how that, that turnover works, but definitely check out P-Dub's arcade loft for his video on the legacy arcade cabinets. HG is anyone maintaining that console kit site anymore? That would be something you would have to ask the man himself, Mr. Console kits. Delvin Henry, any word on Marvel versus Capcom 2? So all they've said on that is, yes, they want to make it, and that's it. So we know they want to make it. We They know we want it. Um, everybody that knows much about that game knows that that game is n notorious to you know emulate. So it's just a matter of them doing it, getting some sort of chipset that can run that game at the 60 frames per second it requires without any kind of stuttering or anything like that, and it meets their cost, you know, cost product. So Andrew Zapata says, I'd pay money for Simpsons. 100% I would too. Um, years ago, I had a, a dream video that I put out there about Arcade 1-Up making four-player cabinets. This is before they had ever announced any. And I said, you know, dream dream scenario. I would love to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, X-Men, and The Simpsons on one cabinet. Obviously, for licensing and legal reasons, that wasn't able to ever happen. But that those... You know, three games, you throw in Sunset Riders as well. Those those side-scrolling Konami beat-em-ups, man, they are something that I absolutely love to this day. Some people don't like them because they say they have little replay value. I'm a Simpsons nerd. I'm an X-Men nerd. So, like, I, same thing with Ninja Turtles. I, I don't ever get tired of those games just because, to me, those are, like, the closest thing you we had to, like, living the live action or the, the living the cartoons in a real-world setting. So, like, you could watch The Simpsons, and you could play The Simpsons, and, it's, and it felt like the cartoon. Same thing with X-Men. Same thing with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You felt like you were playing through the television animated series, which was awesome. Dream says, Killer Instinct is 2.5D. And, yes, that is a lot of the reason why it is so graphically challenged to emulate. It has, you know, those... 3D graphics, so to speak, two and a half D technically, but yeah, for the most part, 3D. 
Taylor Vision, do I ever think we'll get in a WWF slash E arcade one up cabinet? Uh so that one that one is a legal nightmare, and honestly, I don't think we'll ever see a Russell Fest or a Superstars. I think the closest we would ever get would be like a Retromania type of port. And if you did get a, a Russell Fest or a Superstars, it would have to be likely edited and characters changed and swapped out, and it'd basically have to be for the most part reprogrammed as far as what i know of the nightmare that is trying to license that game so in its original arcade format i don't think we'll see those games ever on an arcade one-up platform but then again i've been shocked and surprised before so it is what it is wilson singleton says i'm with you there doug x-men and simpsons turtles was always the bee's knees absolutely janine harris twisted metal do i think they would i don't think so on that for sure um I just feel like there'd be so many other like prominent arcade games that would take top billing way before they ever start going down that rabbit hole. So I don't, I don't think we'd ever see a twisted metal in my opinion. There is no spoon says I no longer have a guest room converted it to an arcade. No regrets. That is the stuff I would like to hear. So I don't feel as crazy when I read and hear other people making those types of decisions. Uh, Mr. Vidget games, which number one, love your name. This is the arcade version of Killer Instinct and Killer Instinct 2 on there, right? So it doesn't say that in the text, but I 100% would expect that to be. I mean, we look at that image. That image is the arcade version. of That's not the Super Nintendo version. So, And again, if you're going to do this, do it right. And it says right here, soundtrack and 3D rendered graphics all revered. So that right there tells me arcade version. That doesn't, that doesn't scream SNES version to me, so... I think they're doing it right. I think they're doing it justice. And I think 100% these will all be the arcade versions. Frank Gallagher, Crazy Taxi 1 and 2 cabinet with Cruising USA, Cruising Exotica, and Cruising World. Now, that's a dream lineup. Um, you're, you're, mixing, you're mixing licensors on that one, which normally has always been said that's not, not impossible, but Typically, people don't want to share profits. So the way, the reason why we don't see that, anybody ever understands how this works. So like, the reason you're not seeing Marvel verse, Marvel superheroes, the fighting game on this X-Men cabinet, something like that. Capcom game and Konami games. So you'd have to make a deal with both of those companies and they would have to agree to terms and those terms would typically be 50-50 down the split in a perfect world scenario. However, there's always one person at that bargaining table that's trying to get that 51% and trying to make the other person get 49%. So that's why we don't see these, you know, cross pollinization things happening on these arcade one up cabinets. I think the reason we're able to see a Konami game and these data East games exist on the X-Men cabinet is because they now exist all under that Disney Marvel umbrella. And they're for all intents and purposes under that single roof and no longer split between data East and Konami. So Joe S. says, Simpsons with Sunset Riders, Moo Mesa, and Bucky O'Hare. See, there we go. That That is an awesome lineup. So if you can't get Turtles, Simpsons, and X-Men on the same cabinet, that lineup right there that Joe S. just said, Simpsons, Sunset Riders, Cowboys of Moo Mesa, and Bucky O'Hare, that is an awesome lineup that I, again, don't need it. 100% would still buy just because I love it. But things like that always drive me crazy because I'm like, well, then what artwork would I want on it? Because if you throw Simpsons on there, that's great. But the other games are just as great too, and they also have some awesome artwork so it's one of those things where i would hope that they would have like multiple versions available similar to what we're seeing here with this dragon's lair and space ace version where you kind of get to pick what retailer you purchase from or who you go with as far as you know what art package you get wicked yebnubs must buy tempest and pong pub table Joel Norman, I love that we're getting super battle toads, but I would rather have had it paired with other three and four player side scroller beat em ups, but oh well. Yeah, I mean, there's always concessions. You always have to kind of take what you can get. There's perfect world scenarios where we can put our dream cabinet lineups together, but from what I'm seeing, everything makes sense as far as what games are put to, you know, put on these lineups. There's no games that like jump out to me like, why the heck would they include that on this cabinet? So I think they've definitely done a lot of good research as far as what games to pick and include on these machines so i'm loving what i'm seeing p-dub says he wants tempest killer instinct and pong so here's the question patrick which cabinets are you going to rotate out slash get rid of to make room for it because i know you're in the same boat i am i know you are struggling for space 
And if you're not, you're lying to me because I've seen that loft. It's just as filled up as my house. Delvin Henry says, Narc, Smash TV, and Total Carnage. That would be an awesome. I'd love to see a dual, st dual stick cabinet. Joey loves KNC. Gotta love the Dragon Slayer. P-Dubs is the Dragon Slayer, the original arcade ROM. So that's what we don't know. We don't know if it's the arcade version. We don't know if it's like uh, the DVD versions. There's, there's a lot of different versions of Dragon Slayer out there. So we'll have to wait until we get some more information on there because it doesn't say, at least it didn't say when I saw it. Uh, Captivated Industry, Now to Relieve the Magic, Home Arcade Cabinet features the title game, Sci-Fi Adventure Space, Renowned Producing. Yeah, so nothing I can see here mentions arcade accurate ROM or anything like that. So that, that still may be you know, being worked out as far as what it's running. The top of uh, everybody's wish list. Unfortunately, every time you know that gets brought up, it's just one of those things that it's it's the the response supposedly is just not not happening right now. Not not saying never, but just saying not right now. And honestly, I think if Nintendo were gonna do something like that, they'd do it themselves. They would release some sort of like Coleco style arcade cabinet, and they would have like their Donkey Kong. They would have their Popeye versions, and we'd all buy it. Let's be honest, we all would. It would be $100 and we'd buy it in a heartbeat. But I don't see Nintendo partnering with Arcade 1UP anytime soon. Let's just put it that way. P-Dub says, yes, out of room. We'll get rid of Burger Time, the original Atari 12 and 1, and Pac-Man, I think is what I just read. That chat's flying. Yeah, Pac-Man 40th. So that would be a good trade-off. I, I think you'd, you'd do well to swap those out and then put some of these new ones in. Chris Davis, huge credit to Arcade 1UP for these physical cabinet designs. This significantly complicates their production model, but so worth it. And agree. Yeah, 100%. That's the thing that people like take for granted. It's like every time they cut a new shape for this, that means they have a new dedicated SKU that they have to manufacture, keep up with, and things. Obviously, it's, it's as simple as you know training the machine to cut the board differently. But as far as storing, shipping, handling, all those type of things in a manufacturing realm... That takes up its own unique little footprint in the warehouse while they're putting everything together. So the more you can do that has the same components and shares, the better from a manufacturing standpoint. However, I love that they're going down this road. I wish they would do it, you know, just stamp it right now and say, hey, where possible, every single thing we're going to release moving forward will have its own unique arcade cabinet shape. Um, I think that's just, you know, something they need to continue on doing because we all love it. We all love seeing it. There's probably some OCD people out there. They're like, oh my God, none of my cabinets line up perfectly anymore and the shapes are different. I, I, you know, I can understand that argument too. Me personally though, I love the individuality of all these machines and I want to see these machines in their unique cabinet shapes to the best of their ability. So hope they continue doing that. Joel Norman, how about Capcom does a Tower of Doom and Shadows over Mysteria combo on the totem pole as far as if we'd ever saw something like that? So I don't think it's happening anytime soon. Bozo Calvin Jr., my wish list is going to be X-Men and Killer Instinct. I'm tired of Pac-Man. Dragon's Lair is a must. So you have excellent taste, I'll tell you that right now. So your eyes are gravitating to the same cabinets that mine have gravitated thus far. Charlotte Hornet says, what you said, I don't see Nintendo partnering with Arcade 1UP anytime soon. Isn't Killer Instinct Nintendo? No, Killer Instinct is under Rare. It got sold to Midway, and it, it's it's bounced around several times. But it originally was Nintendo, but it is no longer Nintendo. So that's, that's the, the short end of that. Arcade 1UP retail stores in the future possible, says Biggie D. That is, um, I don't think that's. Well, I don't want to say anything is not possible. I don't think that's probable. That's that's the reasonable response to that. Um, Arcade One Up just started selling T-shirts and merchandise. Like, I don't think they're in the position to want to like open up a franchise retail store to sell arcade cabinets because number one, you'd have to have a giant kind of like warehouse space for that. Like, obviously, you have like a showroom that has the cabinets, and then you have a couple of machines lined up for people to pull off the shelf. But like. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense from a, a cost perspective because then you got tons of overhead of staff and then I, I, I don't think that's ever going to happen realistically. I think they, they're they happy making the products and then sending them out to retailers. I think they're happy with their retail partners. I don't think they want to jump in bed and start their own retail store by any means. 
Run and Gun. That would be awesome. That is a fun game. Uh, a lot of people actually prefer that over NBA Jam. How do I feel about Mugen? I love Mugen. Uh, obviously, we'll never see it sold because it's not meant to be sold, but it is fun. Obviously, some people mix reactions, but where else can you have, you know, Homer Simpson fighting Apocalypse or Peter Griffith fighting Sabretooth? Things like that are only possible in Mugen, and that's why I've always loved that platform for years and years and years. It blew my mind in the early 2000s when I first discovered it, and I've loved it ever since. I need to dust it off and, you know, reboot it up and play some more Mugen. So thanks for bringing that back up. Scoot Diggity, any tips or sites I should track for the new Killer Instinct cabinet to make sure I get one? So first and foremost, your main players right out of the gate for America anyway are going to be GameStop, Walmart, and Best Buy. Those are going to be your three retailers that have typically always posted their pre-orders and cabinets online first. Um, typically, historically, as much as everybody hates GameStop and likes to talk about hating GameStop, GameStop has almost always been the first people to ever put new pre-orders out there. So if you want to, you know, I don't know, badger those websites for the next couple of days slash weeks, those would be my three. I would suggest that you kind of keep an eye on just, you know, when you wake up in the morning, just type in arcade one up in the search bar, filter it by new to old and see if they've got any new pre-orders for you. So that would be my two cents. How about Ninja Baseball Basket? <laughs> I always screw that name up because it's so silly to me. Ninja Baseball Batman. Fantastic game. I love it to death. Uh, great side scrolling beat em up. I don't know what else you, you pair with that to make. That's the thing. Like, there's so many great games out there. It's just like building a cohesive like lineup that makes sense. That it is not just a, a hodgepodge of crazy games that have nothing to do with each other. And then it makes the control panel super wonky because then you're trying to, you know, retrofit several different control configurations. Like, I, I would like to see that game release. I just don't know off the top of my head. Nothing's jumping out at me is like what games to pair with that. Twilight Zoner says, truthfully, they all look great. And I tend to agree. Like, whether or not you're going to buy any of these, like, I know everyone's tired of Pac-Man. They've said as much a thousand times. But this is a good-looking Pac-Man cabinet. I just, my two cents would be to change the riser graphics. But again, other people may disagree completely. Uh, the Tempest cabinet looks perfect, in my opinion. No changes or suggestions there, other than maybe throw on some volcano buttons, is what I mentioned. Street Fighter II cabinet, my only suggestion would be to change that control panel overlay graphic from the cement to this type of, you know, graphic we see here on the side of the riser pong bar top type of thing. I think it looks great. It looks retro. I like the aesthetic. I like the design factor killer instinct. I like that all black look. Obviously it won't be for everybody. Some people mentioned they would like some riser graphics. Uh, I, my knee jerk reaction is I like the all black look. It looks clean and I like that space ace dragons layer. They look absolutely perfect to me. Zero changes there. And the X-Men game looks perfect. Again, my, my dream wish was that it was six player, but again, it really doesn't make any sense for arcade one up to make this a six player game. Um, financially anyway. So I get why they went with the four players. That, so uh, just minor, minor tweaks and changes. That's all I could offer. Other than that, I think they really nailed these and uh, I'm, I'm excited to purchase these. Not excited about trying to figure out the logistics of where to put them. But I'm excited to pick some of these machines up, guys. Absolutely are. Yeah, you can always design your own riser and change things out. Absolutely can. Frank Gallagher, I still think the Street Fighter II cabinet wins by far when it comes to nostalgia, hands down. Obviously, I'm biased as I have that machine sitting over here in the corner. Um, so I won't comment. Um, but I, the Dragon's Lair, the Space Ace, the X-Men, I, I can't pick them, man. Literally, like these, these top four, Tempest, Street Fighter. So basically the only two that like I'm not 100% just goo goo gaga over is the Pac-Man and the Pong. And there's nothing against the Pong. It's just when I compare it to things like Dragon's Lair, Killer Instinct, X-Men, like those are my childhood nostalgic feels. Obviously people that are a little bit older than me, the Pong is going to be much more attractive, but it is what it is. Hayden Dew says, will the Pong be $1,000? I had no way. There's no way that thing's going to be $1,000. Um, just because it, it's it's emulated games, it's not like it's the Atari Pong coffee table that actually has like mechanical elements and things like that. No, this is going to be you know dots on a LCD screen. So, hey, Scarpads comic tweaks. Do I think Arcade One Up is recycling games too much? I desperately want Berserk, Star Castle, and Robotron. So, 
there's many ways to answer that. Do I think they're recycling games? Mm, yes and no. And thank you for the super chat, by the way. I greatly appreciate that. Obviously, Pac-Man has been released to death at this point. I 100% from a business standpoint understand why they're doing it. It's a super profitable um, brand. It's got tons of global recognition. Obviously, you want to pr promote and produce the crap out of that because it makes sense. So that's why we've got Miss Pac-Man. That's why we got Pac-Man. We've got literally like six different versions of the Pac-Man arcade one-up cabinets and all sorts of different form factors. I think Pac-Man needs to quietly, after this Legacy Edition, quietly kind of take a hiatus. Obviously, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Miss Pac-Man version of this Legacy Edition. Again, it makes financial sense, even if people don't like it. The 12-in-1 Street Fighter II, um, like that's technically the cocktail cabinet, but when that cocktail cabinet came out and that 12-in-1 game lineup is, one of the most common comments I saw regarding that was people said, I wish this was the game lineup I could have got in my Street Fighter II cabinet. So I know people wanted that lineup in a arcade one-up machine. When you're an early adopter for any kind of electronic device, you always essentially pay a premium because things always get improved, they get smaller, they get sleeker, they get new features down the line. It happens with phones, it happens with consoles. Just when a PlayStation 5 comes out six months later, PlayStation 5 Slim comes out. And, you, you know, things like that always happen. Arcade 1-Up's no different. And if you're Arcade 1-Up, when you had a couple of missteps early on, especially with these Generation 1 cabinets, so like their original Street Fighter 2 cabinet had some issues, their original 12 and one and uh, Tempest cabinet had issues, you want to kind of right those mistakes and, you know, give the people your best foot forward and say, Hey, all right, we can do better. Let's prove it. So I understand why they would want to re-release some of these things. Cause they're like, Hey, we can do better. Let's show you, we're going to prove it. So we're going to re-release these. It's not going to be a 100%, you know, recreation. We're going to add some new bells and whistles and flair. But you also got to keep in mind, like a lot of us, we're diehards. We've been following the brand for a long time. They're still bringing in new people into the arcade one up fold, so to speak. So, so for the first time, like we see this Pac-Man cabinet and we're like, oh my God, this is like the 30th version of Pac-Man. For somebody, this is going to be their very first arcade one up cabinet. This is going to be their very first experience with owning their own, you know, Pac-Man cabinet machine. So this is going to be perfect for them. And same type of thing for the Atari 12 and one re reissue in this Tempest form factor. That's going to be somebody's first experience with the arcade one up brand. So they're going to, you know, come in thinking, Hey, this is great and everything. So you're going to win some new customers. You're going to ruffle some older customer feathers. It's unavoidable. It's a lose, lose double-edged sword regardless, but it does make business sense. Demille Jr. It's a shame that the outrun cabinet doesn't have spy hunter. I could play that all day. That is a very fun game. Gauntlet says soul for sale. Judah Buddha says, my Galaga only has two games, but I am happy for the Galaga artwork. And that's the thing. People are going to have different like things they value. Like Certain people just like the look of having that dedicated cabinet with whatever artwork it is. There's a lot of people that I've seen like reskin cabinets completely to you know, include a game that was you know, lower on the list. So I saw people that you know, changed, uh, oh, was it Crystal Castles? So they changed their Centipede arcade one-up cabinet to a, a Crystal Castles theme. It's not, you know, necessary. I don't think Arcade One Up is going to release a dedicated Crystal Castles machine, but for somebody out there, they bought that Centipede machine, but they liked Crystal Castles more, so they went out and invested even more money and put some, you know, decals on there so it looked like a Crystal Castles machine. Everyone's going to have different things they value. Like, you're going to find some people on here that are more excited for uh, battle toads on this Killer Instinct cabinet than anything. Obviously, they're probably going to be the minority, but there's going to be different people out there, different strokes for different folks. Everyone's got their own, you know, independent values of what they think is the most important feature on these cabinets. Some it's the artwork, some it's the, the, the game lineup, some it's one individual game, some it, you know, it's the aesthetics and the features. Some of them it's online capabilities. Everyone's got different values. <laughs> Nate, the gamer says, I'm glad that they are doing more unique cabinet shapes. Absolutely agree. Panatic says, you think Sega, Sonic the Hedgehog could happen. It's a Japan. So I'm assuming you're talking about the one that uses a trackball. 
That one is uh, a very unknown game as far as the American audience. Most people don't even know what that is. And again, I'm, I'm assuming that's what we're talking about here. Um, if you were going to include that game, it would have to be on some other unique Sega cabinet titles. And again, that, that goes with one of those things where you're like, what do you throw that on there that makes sense that it isn't, you know, a, a, you being guilty of just throwing a trackball inside of a fighting game control panel configuration, things like that. Like, you know, it's, you got to make those cohesive lineups. Otherwise it's like, why did somebody put this stupid trackball in the middle of my six button fighting con game configuration when it didn't need it? So it's always, it's always difficult like that. So Charlie Edwin says, I was really hoping Tempest would include Tempest 2000. That would be pretty sweet, but, um, that would require some definitely different, uh, hardware, so to speak. So they would have to, you know, really be dedicated to supporting Tempest 2000 if they were going to, you know, produce a, a new PCB just to run that one particular game as opposed to the other 12 that are included. Dragon Punch Dave is excited for Killer Instinct. Price and release date. So release dates, uh, no exact dates. April is the windows being tossed around right now. So we can go over to the brick. They had their pre-orders and this is Canadian prices, by the way. So if you're seeing this, don't freak out. This is their April 17th hold, holding street date. Obviously, that can change any given date. Things have always been subject to change. So don't don't go writing April 17th on your calendar and expecting something to magically show up on your doorstep that date. But that is what they've got thus far. It is April 17th has been their hold placement date. Hayden Do, do I think Arcade One Up will Buy old Xbox One and Arcade One Up since Rare is owned. Do I think Arcade One Up is going to buy Xbox as a company? Uh, you'll have to clarify that because if you're asking me if I think Arcade One Up will buy Xbox as a company, that 100% will not happen. <laughs> Xbox is huge. Spidey should have been on the X Men cab. Yeah, that would have been nice. That's a Sega title, unfortunately. Uh, but then again, Data East and Konami tabs. So, hmm. Now that you mentioned that, now that I'm saying that out loud, yeah, Spider Man would have been an awesome inclusion on that. That would have been another uh, just bang up edition, fits with the Marvel Universe and everything. So, huh. Yeah, our kid, wanna, where's Spider Man? Where's my Spider Man? I'm not actually upset about that. I just do wish that would. Will R WrestleFest ever happen? Uh, we talked about that earlier. Not in its original form factor. There's. Um, just so many different things going on with the, the legal rights to the original characters on that game. Some of them are now deceased. So then you're talking to um, families. Uh, then you're having to recode things and change logos, which is not hard. But the original game roster and lineup, I don't think we'll ever see Russell Fest come out officially on an arcade one. -up. I think it would be tweaked and changed and characters you know, moved around if we ever saw that. So, But yeah. ETA is April ish. We'll just say ish, you know, so springtime. Again, Canadian prices, I would expect American prices for the arcade one up products for the most part to be in that $4.99 range. Some may be cheaper, some may be a little more expensive, but $4.99 is what I'm anticipating on these machines that we're seeing right now. Not sure on the Pong, though. That one's kind of hard for me to like spitball a price. What would you guys pay for Pong? Obviously, some people are going to say probably nothing, but if you're interested in Pong, what, what do you think the a reasonable price should be? So 17 inch screen, four player spinners. Uh, we don't know the exact dimensions of height, but we're assuming it's waist high and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games on it. So Jonathan Fox, the artwork is what sold me on the star Wars cab. Had to have it after seeing the final render looks even better in person. I 100% agree on that one. I love that one. It's not like just glorified with unnecessary logos on it either. It's very true to form in that original Atari design. Green Metal Box just joined. Any idea if X-Men will have some kind of credit limiter to increase the challenge? Uh, I 100% doubt that. I, I think it'll just be, you know, full tilt. You can sl slam and spam that credit button as much as you possibly want. How am I doing, Frankie? That's a good question. I'm doing great other than I'm absolutely starving. So I'm using my lunch hour to hang out and chat with you guys because I know we'd all be excited and we'd have lots of opinions and things to say on here. So I will have to go back to work in about five minutes and I'll have to 
scarf a sandwich down because I'm literally stomach growling right now. But other than that, I'm doing great. For, so thanks for asking. So four ninety nine. Soul for Sale says eight ninety nine. Chris Davis says two ninety nine. Delvin Henry says three hundred. Xavier Garza, did I see last year's Hype Beast Supreme Arcade One Up? I did see that. Um, obviously not for me. Not geared towards me either. That that's that was out there to you know expose the brand to a new audience. I've got a bunch of hype beast stuff that I've followed. I've got a bunch of bathing ape clothes, um, but yeah, I'm not going to pay. I already have a Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet from Arcade One Up. I, I, there's no need for me to double dip and buy that Supreme cabinet. I'm not so much of a, a hype beast that I felt like that. Uh, $3.99 seems to be what most people are saying slash expecting that Pong machine to be. So, Christopher Molina, no Simpsons has not been confirmed. Officially, anyway, I'm just telling you f- from their business plan and the way Arcade One Up plots things out, they're going after the heavy hitting titles that were always financially big, big profitable arcades back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and things like that. So, Simpsons will happen, it's when it'll happen. My guess is it's going to be part of the summer's E3, you know, event summer schedule announcement. I think that's when that comes out. Judah Buddha, thank you so much for that super chat, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Kagi Wong says Supreme sucks. Yeah, a lot of people are definitely upset about that one. Green Metal Box, I wonder if we'll see Arcade One Up sell the front panel swap outs that have the coin door. At the very least, maybe they'll just offer, you know, I mean, because it's it's a sticker. Let's be real. So there's already third party avenues out there that offer any kind of graphic package you want. Some of them even offer replacement uh, front kick plates that have cutouts for physical coin doors like it's it's how how detailed and intricate you want to make your machines it's it's like owning a car you know some people buy a car never change anything other than the oil and the tires some people customize swap out every single oem part they possibly can wheels tires uh you know upholstery body kits engine parts all sorts of things so these arcade cabinets are no different you could spend a bunch of money replace every component add new graphics you can make them look and feel and sound and play as much as you want it's just a matter of how much time money and energy you want to invest frankie rios thank you very much i greatly appreciate that (laughs) judah thank you for helping out the lunch fund appreciate that man christopher thank you so much guys all right so i think we're gonna wrap it up we we've we've talked a lot we've shared our opinion i think for the most part i'm kind of speaking for all of us obviously that's uh, an assumption on my part. For what I've seen in the chat so far, it looks like most of you guys are pretty happy with what we've seen thus far. Um, I'm excited to learn more details. Um, like I said, I'm fully expecting Killer Instinct to be arcade ROMs. We're still unsure if it'll be arcade ROMs or DVDs or how they'll do the Dragon's Lair slash Space Ace. Everything else, though, looks great. I'm excited about the design changes. I'm excited about these game lineups and I'm, you know, I'm just excited about the future for arcade one up. I think this is a step in the right direction, seeing more live Wi-Fi games for things like killer instinct. Again, that's another great step in the right direction. And then, you know, thinking out of the box with this pong four player pub table. So that's a new unique change. So I appreciate it. Edwin, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Frankie. Yes. My name is Doug Smith. That is my name. People call me cool toy. But yeah, I actually have a name. It's Doug Smith. I just don't like referring to myself in the third person because it feels like super self, self-conscious. self But anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in for the live stream. Hope you the rest of your Monday goes well. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about some more stuff in the future. So take care, everybody.